Hey, what's up, everybody? Listen, if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. Yeah, I got your attention now, right? Number two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Number three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Number four, you can make money from your podcast. That's right. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum viewership. Number five, it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So right now, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What's up, everybody? My name is Cliff and you are listening to the What Now Podcast. That's right. The What Now Podcast, where we, through conversation, discuss ways that we can effectively address life's most difficult moments. So sit back, relax, and enjoy tonight's episode. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the What Now Podcast. up everybody welcome back to the what now podcast my name is clifton petty john and for the sake of this podcast you can call me cliff all right so what we're doing is we're having a conversation about effectively dealing with or effectively addressing life's most difficult situations and i know some of you might say you don't deal with specific situations if there are specific situations that you would like for me to address on the show, you can always reach out to me. You can reach me at CP Ventilates. That's V E N T I L A T E S at CliftonPettyJohn.com. Or you can call our office at 302 648 5544. That same number, you can text IDEA. Text the word idea to, and we will reply, and you can give us your idea for the show. All right? So here's what we're going to do. Tonight, we're going to talk about solutions, solution, a solution. And we know that a solution is a way to solve a problem, a way to solve a problem or an answer to a problem or, you know, a, a way out of a difficult situation. Okay, or a way of addressing a difficult situation. Difficult situation. All right. How many of you have had problems in life? Raise your hand. I see. Okay. How many of you have had some difficult moments in your life? We all have. And the reality is that many times we struggle with finding a solution to some of those problems. And sometimes, we seek solutions in areas that aren't able, that aren't equipped to give us solutions. And sometimes what ends up what ends up happening is we end up digging a deeper hole than it's already than has already been dug for our 
ourselves. Why? Because from a young age, we are taught to seek solutions externally. That's what we do. We we try to find our solution. And now, you know, with the Internet being so accessible to us, uh, whether it be through our phones or through our iPads or whether it be through our computers or whatever, we have access to so much information instantly with one touch of a button or not even sometimes a touch of, well, I guess you do have to touch a button sometimes, but I know my phone is voice activated and some phrases I can say that will call calls Bigsby to search some things for me. And that, I'm sure that's the same way it is with other people's phone as well. So we have access to all of this information. So anything that you want to search, you can search. The sad part about it is sometimes in the midst of us searching, we never search to find out the validity of the information that is at our disposal. So sometimes we are applying solutions that may not apply to our lives. It doesn't even matter to me if the person went through something similar to the, that you did. And that's great. Sometimes you do need to seek you know, information from people who may have hit it down some of the same paths that you've hit it down. However, 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 sometimes even in applying the information that they give you, you still find yourself in need of a solution because all the information they gave you was just a Band-Aid for that moment, but it didn't give you any conclusion to the matter that you are seeking a solution for. Am I making any sense to anybody? Because I want you to understand tonight that maybe sometimes, and I'm going to throw maybe out there, forget that maybe. The reality is that sometimes you are the solution. Now, I want us to understand that God created us with, this is just what I personally believe, God created us with a problem in mind. Therefore, he formed, created us, he shaped and molded us to be problem solvers, okay? Now, there are there are times that we will help other people solve their problems. I mean, my God, I'm a life coach, so I understand that. I understand that I am, am a resource to help you solve a problem, but the misconception about a coach is I don't give you the answers that you seek. All I do is position you in a place to where you understand that the answers that you are seeking are inside of you. God created you with everything that you needed when he created you. The problem is many times we never tap into the power of his creation inside of us because we are devaluing the power of our creation and magnifying the power of somebody else's creation. Now, am I saying that we don't honor other people? We don't respect other people. We don't value the, the thoughts and opinions of other people. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not coming for mentors. I'm not coming for spiritual leaders. I'm not coming for all of that. I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is that if you ever want to experience solutions that are perpetual, you are going to have to learn to tap into who you actually are and who you've been created to be and what you've been created to do. If you never tap into that, then you never really experience a real solution. Now, I know some of you probably are going to disagree with what I'm saying on this show. But I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, baby, I promise you that if you will take your time or take the time this week and take a personal time, your personal time of meditation, your personal time of devotion, whatever it is that you do on your personal time and say, God, you created me. And inside of me, you put tools, you put strategies you put gifts, you put talents, you put abilities, you put these resources inside of me. God, teach me to tap into the resources that are internal that are internally inside of me. 
and teach me how to apply those resources to my everyday life. Now, I'm going to tell you, many of us sometimes have looked at God as this great spiritual entity and even with spiritual gifts. And I'm not just talking about spiritual gifts. I'm also talking about those gifts that help us function on a day-to-day basis. But I want to hit spiritual gifts for a minute right now. And what I want to say about the spiritual gifts is sometimes we confine spiritual gifts or what spiritual gifts are used for to just a function in the church or just a function in what we label as spiritual matters. But what glory does God really get out of that? There are some gifts inside of you that if you really tap into those gifts and allow them gifts to be free to freely express themselves within you and outside of you, then you will find many of the solutions to the life problems that you're having. Now, am I saying that that means that it'll be the end all for you? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we have to begin to value the invest the investment that the creator made inside of us. It said that he made us in his likeness and in in his image. Now, if he is the creator, that means that he has made us what? Creators as well. And then it says that he dwells inside of us. So if he dwells inside of us, his spirit dwells inside of us, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Ruach Kadesh, um, if it dwells inside of us, then we are lacking nothing. We're lacking nothing at all. The reality is that sometimes it doesn't manifest in our lives because we just have not tapped into that thing yet. We haven't. One of the things that I always describe it is um, in the Old Testament, it talks about redigging the wells, redigging the wells. And um, I think about that in our personal lives as well. I feel like that sometimes what has happened is we've allowed circumstances and situations in our lives to clog up the wells of living water that are inside of us. And what are you talking about living water, Cliff? I'm talking about the abundance that was promised to us. I'm not even just talking from a financial standpoint. However, I am talking from a financial standpoint. But there is a freedom that the creator desires for us to experience in all core areas of our lives. If you know me, you know I talk about a holistic approach of life. I talk about our spiritual, our emotional, our economical, our family, in the areas of business and careers, uh, mental. What did I forget? I probably forgot something. But I talk about wholeness in all core areas of our lives. And the reason why sometimes we don't have wholeness there is because physical, that is. The reason why we don't have wholeness in some of our areas is because we are looking for that wholeness somewhere else, in somebody else, instead of realizing that the ability for wholeness resides inside of us. It really does. If you go back and listen to my last podcast where I was talking about what are we conditioning ourselves to believe, many of us have conditioned ourselves to believe that we are not enough. Now, for whatever reason, maybe, you know, uh, you were told that when you were younger. Maybe you uh, felt that when you were younger. Maybe you were you dealt with rejection in the midst of your, uh, in your life, or maybe you come up from a family that didn't know how to affirm you. Uh, properly, or maybe your family affirmed you, but you were dealing with so much other things in your mind and you had no outlet, or you felt as if you had no outlet, so you just shouldered it all, so you didn't really begin to realize that you have the ability to be the solution. You just felt as if you were going to always seek solutions, always seek solutions. Now, I'm not saying we don't need um assistance. I'm a person that sees a therapist. And the main reason why I see a therapist is because to many people, I am their outlet. I allow people to dump on me and dump on me and dump on me. And then I'm a person that tries to solve everybody's problems. So I need someone to talk to, to get that thing off of me so that I'm not carrying something that I'm not, that I'm not equipped to carry or that I shouldn't be uh, carrying. And you, Cliff, but you just said you're the solution. Yes. 
I am the solution. However, one of the greatest solutions that I understand is that although I am the solution to myself and I may be the solution to many, I am not the solution to everybody. And my solution to them may be in some areas of their life or one area in their life, but not in other areas of their life. So I had to learn to release myself, all right? But I want you to understand and value yourself enough and condition yourself to realize who created you. If you can, number one, understand who created you. And I remember when I was young, it was a song that you said, God don't make no jump. And, you know, it was a very basic song. The lyrics weren't deep or profound. But the reality of that thing is that we have to grab hold of the fact that God does not make any junk. You are not junk. You are not junk. When he formed and put you together, he put you together with purpose. I can't say that anymore. But you have to begin to understand that he who is the solution created you to be a solution as well. So my encouragement to you tonight, change your speech, change your thought pattern. Begin to visualize yourself as the solution. Begin to visualize yourself exercising your your gifts, talents, and abilities. Begin to visualize yourself beyond where you are now. And then you'll understand that you are the solution, and then you'll begin to see you manifesting in your life, you being the very solution that it is that you need and that you desire. Why? Because you will allow the creator to flow through you. And as he flows through you, solutions will be your portion. Just encouraging you again all tonight. You're the solution, baby. Quit calling yourself all those negative things that you called yourself and begin to call yourself the solution. Be blessed. Can you identify any areas in your life where stagnation is manifesting? Now, I know some of you might say, no, I can't. Well, I want us to look at stagnation for what it really is. Some people have identified stagnation as something that's not growing or that's not producing. I don't believe that stagnation. To me, stagnation can also be that yes, we're growing. Yes, we're producing. However, we're growing and producing in a manner that's disrespectful to the purpose and the greatness that resides inside of us. And listen, we all have areas where we can identify that we could be doing a lot better in. There's greater potential in those areas than we are experiencing. And guess what? I have a tool that will help you begin to experience transformation in those areas of stagnation in your life. And that tool is called From Stagnation to Transformation. That's right. That is my book, From Stagnation to Transformation. So I want you to head over to my website, www.cliftonpettyjohn.com. I want you to hit there. I want you to hit the Transformation tab. There you're going to find a free preview of my book. That's right. A free preview of my book. And I promise you, after you read the preview, you're going to want to invest in your personal transformation through purchasing the book. So again, hit over there, purchase the book. Let me know you purchased it. Here's what I always say, guys. If you purchase the book, you read the book, you apply the principles in your life, and yet you still are stagnant in the areas that you are applying them to, and you're not experiencing any transformation, and you can prove to me that you have applied these principles, I will give you a a 100% refund. That's right, a 100% refund. Why? Because I believe in the application of the principles that are outlined in this book. So again, visit www cliftonpettyjohn.com and purchase your copy of From Stagnation to Transformation.